You hear all the bull about diet and exercise. Carbs are evil. Do more cardio. Never eat bread or cookies again. Just do a juice cleanse. We get it. We fell for all the BS too. It's time to go right to the source with the truth about how to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I am Liz. And I am Becca. We are your nutrition educators, and this is The Food Code. Hello, friends. It's like Joe Rogan. Hello, friends. That's what he says. I know. We're going all of his podcasts. Hello, friends. Hello, Food Code. Um, I wonder, part of me sometimes wonders, like, where did Joe Rogan come from? I have no idea. I'd love to know his story because that guy, he is so knowledgeable in so many topics. So many topics. things. I mean, he, he talks to the experts of everything. So like, I'm sure that would help. Yeah, but he's big. Obviously, he has a huge podcast, paid millions of dollars for that podcast. Then he's part of UFC. He's part of On It. If you guys don't know On It, it's a great company. Yeah, I like um, On It. I like On It. I've done a lot of their training certifications and stuff like that out of Austin, Texas. Really cool mm-hmm. place. Um, yeah, I don't know what else he he does. Like everything, and he, he was an MMA. Like his his. I, I don't know if that's where he started in MMA. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but he's just he, he's big into like CBD and that that mm-hmm. whole world. I just yeah. He's, he likes his weed too. He does. <laughs> I really like him. I was actually listening to something this morning, really interesting, um, about how cannabinoid the body creates its own cannabinoid called endocannabinoid and like it basically talked about how that is probably why humans work like it works so well in the human body Mm -hmm. um and like whatever divine creator you believe in maybe created that plant to allow us to benefit from it yeah um there's a lot of people who benefit from it for pain Um, stress and anxiety yep yep I have some good friends that have um, like really, really bad back problems Mm -hmm. and they don't use it to get high. They use it just in terms of like the pain relief because they don't want to be on all Mm -hmm. of these other pharmaceuticals and I don't blame them, you know, not at all. Um, We tried to get my mom to do it when she had ALS and she did it. I think my dad does it somewhat. My dad has lymphoma. Um, yeah. So I know that I don't, it's in remission luckily, but um, I've never, I've just never been big into it. It's not something that I've ever like really delved into. Yeah. I just wish. So my aunt also passed from ALS before my mom. And apparently rumors are that the sisters all did it together. And I just wish I could have been a fly on the wall because my mom never told me. And so I don't know if she did it or not, or (laughs) if like one or two of them, you know, didn't do, I I don't remember. And unfortunately my other aunt passed away, so I can't ask her, but I'm just like, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall, even if my mom didn't do it, but like all the other aunts did. Um, that would just be funny to see. But anyways, yeah, I, I'm definitely not against it for people. I think if you find it beneficial, obviously if you're using it, like overusing it recreationally, not, not supportive of that, but if it's medical and you find relief from it and you feel good with it. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So, all right. So today we're going to be talking about intuitive eating versus intentional eating. And this Mm -hmm. is something that I would say Beck and I feel pretty strong about in terms of we are not against intuitive eating, but we do strongly believe that you can't intuitive eats if you don't have that intuition to know what food is and how to build your meals. Like if you haven't spent time learning about nutrition, maybe tracking your food for a period of time, understanding how to pair meals together, understanding what makes you feel good, gives you good sustained energy throughout the day, understand quality of food and nutrients. I'm going to say that in intuitive eating is not going to be the best path to go yeah. down. I think the problem with intuitive eating is that it has become a diet for people like people mm-hmm. see it as like well intuitive eating can be what works for me you know and intuitive eating i think is a great concept but what people want out of intuitive eating in terms of i don't want to have to think about food i don't want to have to worry about food i just want to be able to listen to my body typically the people that want those things don't have a good situation currently with those things and so we can't just expect intuitive eating to be like thrust upon us um there there is a process leading into intuitive eating where you start Mm -hmm. to understand intuitive eating and food and how to listen to your body and how food corresponds with your body and how it acts within the body and so that's where i think the problem is is that people have this expectation that like Liz and I were talking about offline, we've talked to multiple people in the past couple of weeks that are like, well, I don't want to have to track food or I don't want to have to think about food. I don't want to have to be constantly worried about food. And it's like, that is a totally, a, mm-hmm. I appreciate that intention. But at the end of the day, you are in a place where you aren't happy or unhealthy or both. 
and you want to be in a place where you're healthier, I'm sorry, but if you don't know enough right now about food and what your body's needs are in terms of food and where the disconnect is there, you you can't be at that place. I'm sorry. Like food is going to have to be a focus for you for a while to be able to get to that place. Yeah. I was going to say, and then you can get to that place, which we do want all of our clients and everyone be able to get to a place where they listen to their body and they respect true hunger and fullness cues. You know, they're not drinking protein shakes at nine o'clock at night because it fits their macros and they're low on protein. Like we don't want that either. (laughs) We really want to be able to educate people, get you to a place where you are healthy. You're not experiencing blood sugar swings, you're not experiencing bad PMS, digestive issues, things like that. And sometimes when you are experiencing those things, you do have to spend time tracking food to understand maybe the culprit to your digestive issues, right? To understand maybe how you pair things together to give you energy rather than make you tired after meals. And so we are all for everyone being able to get to that place We just want to make sure that we're taking the time to develop those skills. Um, And then in turn, we can also build that self-trust to be able to eat more intuitively. Yeah. And I think the other thing that we need to help people realize if like this is confusion is intuitive eating is not intended to be a diet. Like intuitive eating is not something I would use to accomplish weight loss. Like intuitive eating is something I would utilize to accomplish a, you know, healing your relationship with food and finding a consistent place where you can maintain at being able to find enjoyment in food and moderation in certain areas. Like in, I would not utilize intuitive eating with a client if that person like was in a phase where we were trying to lose weight. And yes, do I think that intuitive eating can cause weight loss for some people? Yes, it can. If they are in a somewhat of a calorie deficit by intuitively eating that way, But eventually that calorie deficit is going to disappear. And so like there's adaptation we talk about all the time that happens with the body. So I think that's the other thing is a lot of people in their mind are like, well, I don't want to have to focus on food. I don't want to have to overthink food. I don't want to have to constantly be worried about food, but I want weight loss. It's like, oh, okay. That's kind of hard for a lot of people. I would say the majority of people. Um, And so that's where we want to talk today about how like we cannot be intuitive about something we don't have intuition around. We cannot intuitively listen to our bodies if we have under eaten for years and years and now our body's signals are completely thrown off. If we have health issues because of under eating or malnourishment, like you cannot trust your body if you have done damage or adaptation to the body that has caused it to be in a state of threat. Because the body's not going to be sending proper signals at that time. You're probably going to be having signals of inconsistent hunger, low blood sugar, cravings, poor sleep. Like you can't listen to a body at that place. At that place, you have to be intentional. So we're going to talk a little bit today about, you know, what intuitive eating looks like, kind of what it's intended for, what, you know, definition wise it is, Mm -hmm. and then intentional eating and kind of the difference there. Yeah. So basically intuitive eating asks you to kind of listen and honor the signals of your body. And so again, we're talking about somebody who is getting normal hunger cues. They're not, you know, quieting all of those cues and, you know, <laughs> under eating and skipping meals and eating erratically, things like that. Um, it does ask you to respect your true hunger and fullness cues and developing and honing in on these skills. Again, like I said, takes time and practice. And so there are some things that need to be done first before you can move into this place of intuitive eating. And, and number one is, you've already reached your health, body composition, and performance goals. You've learned through tracking, um, through a time period here where you've spent time tracking and developing that like dictionary of what food is in your mind. You've gone through that period and you've understood what you need to do to meet your goals from day to day without having to track rigorously. You know, And this is a place, I'll be honest, like I spent the last, I don't know, probably year intuitive eating, if you will, and just maintaining, yeah, right? And, couple of years. and more, we'll say intentional eating, which we'll talk about in a second. But, you know, intuitive eating also might be beneficial for you if you've had a poor relationship with food and you've demonized food and you want to be able to have more freedom and improve your relationship with food and not feel guilty or feel shame, you know, when you do cave to certain cravings and things like that. But I think the two big things that we want to cover here in terms of in intuitive eating just as a whole is we have to watch out for some things, Yeah, you know, because I'll be honest guys, like Beck and I are humans and we eat super, super healthy. But if I was just intuitively eating and not thinking about 
building my meals and health all the time, which I do, I would be eating the way that I used to eat. And that is like an asshole. I would eat pizza. I would eat cupcakes, donuts, chocolate chip cookies. Starbucks sounded good. Go ahead and throw that chocolate chip cookie on the Panera order. You know, like things sound good all the time, right? (laughs) Especially in the moment. If I'm intuitively eating and I'm honoring those cues as some people kind of take it a little bit too far, I think I would not be a healthy individual. And so we want to watch out for that, right? Like emotional eating, food decisions that are made in the moment and they're tied to those emotions. You know, we may think like we're hungry, but we're not truly physically hungry. Or you might just over consume because you're using that food as a comfort and a coping mechanism mechanism, you know? Absolutely. And I think that, you know, if you have ever delved into the intuitive eating literature and the true beliefs around intuitive eating, you still need to honor nourishment. Like Mm -hmm. you, you, you do not, I think intuitive eating gets kind of bastardized to an extent. You, they do not believe in like, just eat whatever you want, whatever you want. It is, you have to understand that your body needs nourishment. You want to be consisting most of your meals with whole unprocessed foods, fret fruits, vegetables, all those different things. And, understanding that you need to have an ability to have like a being able to decipher like physical hunger versus appetite that has been created by like an outside stimulus. So what we mean by this is there are certain physical cues that should be present when you are hungry. So a lot of times, especially if like you've let blood sugar drop too low, these are a lot of blood sugar indicating cues. For me, I know I get nauseous. I tend to get headaches. Um, I tend to get very moody and like not fun to be around. Um, and I, I get like almost like I'm going to vomit type feeling because my body is needing food versus I go into my pantry and there's Oreos there and I'm like, mm, I think I'm hungry for Oreos. Like that is a very different th- mm. situation. Or, you know, you maybe ate a couple hours ago, but you're on a road trip and you have snacks in the car. So like they're just there. So you just keep eating them. Mm. So you need to have the ability to have confidence to be able to distinguish between those things um, and be able to distinct, like understand and adhere to fullness levels. Cause this is something that I struggled with for a very, very long time and took a lot of work to heal my relationship with food, my relationship with myself and not always finish what was on my plate mm-hmm. or, you know, you know, at restaurants over consume because people were getting appetizers and then you'd have your meal and you would take from, you know, there was a pizza ordered for the table that you would like, I would gorge myself with food because it was in front of me um, or it was on my plate and in turn, would end a lot of those meals feeling sick to my stomach. And so I, being able to listen to your body throughout meals and just because it tastes good, just because it might be a food you don't eat very often, doesn't mean you overconsume because it's there. Like that is where we have to have confidence with our hunger and fullness cues and in, intuitive eating. That is their, you know, that that's a big part of what it relies on is that you are able to listen and honor those things with your body um, and not get so swayed by environment situations, certain foods that you're around driving by McDonald's and you're stressed, like those types of things. So having the ability to decipher between hunger and appetite for something um, and then also being able to adhere and honor fullness levels. Yeah. The Food Code Podcast is brought to you by Fit Mom Lifestyle. If you're interested in our individualized coaching that we always talk about and how we may be able to help you like we help our clients in accomplishing optimal health and losing weight and achieving their goals, you can click the link in the show notes and you can actually schedule a free 15 to 20 minute call with either of us. We would love to talk to you. Yeah. And I think, you know, for a lot of our clients, one of our big, big goals for them is to be able to improve that relationship with food and be able to moderate some of those things in, but without having those physical symptoms and reactions like stomach ache afterwards or digestive issues or just getting really tired, um, depending upon what food that they're consuming. And so the way that we work with clients is yes, there is a time period where we are educating them on food and nutrition, and we want them to build that kind of food dictionary, as I mentioned before. That does require tracking for a period of time. Depending upon the protocol that we're going through, we may or may not dial in all macros. We may just get into like a healthy range, make sure we're eating adequate protein and look at the quality of the food in total because we want our clients to have flexible metabolisms, be able to you know interchange carbs and fats. So when they leave our program, 
towards the end, we kind of start working on something called intentional eating. And intentional eating bridges the gap here between tracking and intuitive eating. Because I think there is a time and a place that everyone should be able to eat intuitively. But like Becca said, also remember and honor nourishment. And that's what intentional eating is to us. Um, It's an approach to eating that allows you to stay aware of what your body is asking for, listen to those hunger cues, honor your needs, but do so in a way that also helps you maintain health at the forefront and continue to work towards specific health goals if you are not where you want to be yet. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I'll be honest, like when I was training for the powerlifting competition, I would track a couple days here and there, but most days I was just being intentional with my food and I knew that my goal was strength. So I knew I needed to focus on carbs because I was under eight carbs. And so it's just one of those things where like you have to be mindful of how you are planning and setting yourself up for the week. Be mindful of how you're approaching social events, going out to eat. You know, you're not just going in and looking at the menu and be like, oh yeah, that burger and cheese fries sounds good. I'll have that, Mm -hmm. right? You're being intentional of how can I get nourishment from this meal, but also still enjoy it because it's a night out for date night or girls night or whatever. And that's where we kind of want to talk about like, how do you bridge the gap here and find that sweet spot um, so that you can nourish your body, but you can also enjoy some of the foods that you yeah, love. Absolutely. And I think that this another thing, if you haven't listened to our periodization podcasts, go back and listen to those. They were a few weeks back. Um, I think that would be really helpful because what I think about with intentional eating, intentional eating is like you are still working towards something, mm-hmm. whether that is, you know, a maintain maintenance period between cut phases, whether that is a uh, refeed week, whatever it is, there's intention behind the way that you are eating train, you know, for training and for a sprint triathlon or, you know, a powerlifting meet or something like that. I think of intuitive eating as being something that you utilize when you don't really have any more physical goals and you want to just find a healthy place for yourself with food, with your relationship with food, with overall your general health. Um, and it's not really something that you're expecting any type of like results from, mm-hmm. um, intentional eating is directed towards result like you need to be intentional and i think for certain people people that have not yet gotten to a solid place with themselves and with their relationship with food intuitive eating is probably a dangerous place to be um if people you know can't listen to their body or they constantly are worried about gaining weight or like overeating or something like that intuitive eating probably isn't a place that you're ready for yet um i think that intentional eating needs to come first and it requires more mindfulness absolutely intentional eating is you know, you need to be mindful with your choices. So if, you know, for example, hunger is high, like we've gone too long without eating, we've gotten to a place where we're really hunger, hungry, intentional eating asks you to be more attentive around picking foods that make you feel fuller, you know, more nourishing foods, lean proteins, vegetables, healthy fat sources versus denser foods that may leave you hungry and just like eating whatever's there. Mm -hmm. Um, And intentional eating tends to be best for people that, you know, like we said, are, still looking for some type of body composition maintenance or goal and know that if they don't focus on food, things start to slip. Mm -hmm. Like we have plenty of people that I can think of right now that are not necessarily actively working towards weight loss, but they've realized that if they stop tracking, they go back to under eating habits Mm -hmm. or if they start stop tracking, they let like we call them the bites, licks and tastes, the BLTs sneak back in a lot. And then Mm -hmm. we're over consuming or like we just lose the consistency that's important important for our health. Um, and so, you know, I, I think intentional eating can be really helpful, uh, for people who d- know that like they don't want to track forever, but they, they aren't fully confident yet, um, in their own abilities to listen to their body. Yeah. I think it's also perfect for people to start to practice intentional eating and as they step away from tracking, because we also have a lot of people who are very nervous to stop tracking. Like they've been tracking for a long, long time and they're afraid that if they stop tracking, they are going to start gaining weight back. It's Mm -hmm. like a double edged sword, right? Like we have some people that are on one side of the pendulum and some people that are on the other side of the pendulum. But what we want to find here is that you become confident in acknowledging your hunger and fullness cues, right? But also be confident to do a mind body scan and evaluate that this is true hunger. This is not an emotional eating situation. This is not that I'm bored and I'm just, you know, sitting around and there's all of these foods in the house freely available. So I'm munching on them mindlessly eating essentially here. Right. And so we want to start to utilize kind of a combination of maybe stepping away from tracking a few days a week and doing more intentional eating and 
practicing this and maybe evaluating how are your energy levels? How is your sleep? How was your digestion? Did you find mentally that it was challenging to make the right nutrient dense choices in the moment when you weren't tracking? Or did you find that you know, it was very easy. You felt comfortable and you knew how to build your meals because that's our goal for everybody. So we will use this to help people get comfortable being uncomfortable, not tracking. Um, absolutely. So, and I think there's also things to watch out for with intentional eating too. There's pros and cons to everything, guys. There's pros and cons to having to track. There's pros and cons to intuitive eating and there's pros and cons to intentional eating. This is where every person is individual. And that's why we coach at an individual level because not all of our clients track. Some of our clients track with pictures. Some of them track with, you know, written food logs or just sending us meal plans for the week so that we can kind of see. And then we know like whatever plan deviations they're going to have fit into that and we'll help them adjust and walk through those things. So you got to find the sweet spot and you got to go through this phase where you understand food to get to either one of these places. Absolutely. This is something that we'd really try to get our clients to at some point when we're working with them so we can work with them through it. So some things to watch out for, like during this transition from tracking to intentional eating, some people may experience like, again, like I said, the drive to overconsume or they go back to under eating and they go back to the inconsistency of eating. And so that's why we like using habit based stuff um, around like making sure you're eating three meals a day, making sure each meal has protein source in it, like utilizing stuff like that so that we keep habits in, but there's not the pressure of hitting calorie intake or tracking all your food and seeing it a tracking app and stuff like that. Um, and then, also, like for those who are trying to lose weight, under eating can occur if we want to lose weight faster, right? Um, and so if you move away from tracking and you try to think about like, well, the less I eat, the more I'll lose and the quicker I'll lose, that is a slippery slope. If you've ever listened to us, please go back and listen to other other Episode. podcasts if you've never listened to us talk yet. Um, we feel very strongly about trying to go too big into a calorie deficit because that can cause negative metabolic adaptations. And then also... For those that are trying to gain muscle, you know, if you want to get the same idea, if you want to get bigger, stronger, faster, um, over consuming, or like if you, if you introduce something new into your life, I think you need to be careful. So what I mean by that, Mm -hmm. if stress happens, that has not happened before at a level need to be careful. If you start a new training program where like you decide all of a sudden you're going to train for a half marathon or, you know, certain things that can spike hunger really fast, these things we need to be careful around. So I think that if life is relatively stable and you do not have any major big changes coming up with your movement, exercise routine, stress routine, you know, life in general around like family relationships, I think intentional eating can be very, very helpful to bridge the gap away from tracking macros and tracking calories or tracking whatever to try to get to a place where you can trust your body more. Um, But if you like this is where I think it's so helpful to work with someone because a lot of times people will not see for themselves the things that they tend to slip into. Mm -hmm. They will not see that like, I still have a poor relationship with my body and I want to be smaller than I am for X, Y, and Z reason. So every time I don't track, I eat less. Mm -hmm. Like we need to be careful around those things because that's where people continue to get stuck in their cycles. Yep. I couldn't agree more. And it's hard. It's a hard journey, you know, to go through because We all want to be free from dieting. We all want to be free from tracking. We all want to be free from the rigidness, right? Or just constantly thinking about food. And I think the number one thing that I'll say around that is you got to learn food first and you you got to learn what serves your body, what makes you feel good. And then, you know, work your way into more intentional eating Mm -hmm. and intuitive eating. And then you can just enjoy life, know what levers you need to pull in different seasons and know what adjustments need to be made or catch yourself slipping, catch yourself when things are starting to slide. We talk a lot about that with our clients as they're leading the, leaving the program is like, what limitations are important for you to set so that we aren't sliding back into maybe old habits? Because listen, we're all human and we can do something for six months. We can do something for a year. Heck, you can do things for multiple years, but at some point in time, there will be temptations to slide back into old ways and we may not even realize it. And so that's where we want to help bring the awareness to in both of these areas, like whether it's intentional eating or intuitive eating, like you've got to be able to have that awareness constantly of like, Oh, I had a chocolate chip cookie like every day this week. Yeah. That doesn't really serve my goals and that's not really healthy. So maybe I need to pull that back a little bit and, you know, moderate 
how much I'm consuming these things. So yeah. hopefully this was helpful for you. Again, our goal is to educate all of you. So if this podcast was helpful, please share it with a friend rate the podcast, review the podcast, leave us a comment. We love reading those reviews. Um, and I think we're going to have to give away a win the day journal soon and do like a read the review day. Um, that would be fun to do. Yes. I think we, I think we should, we should do that. So if you leave us a review, we will enter you to win a win the day journal. If you're not sure what that is, go to win the day.com. The link is in the show notes below. That is our planner. That is how we help women, um, prioritize themselves and increase productivity. So you can look for that in the show notes and And with that, we hope you guys have a great day and we'll be back soon. Thank you for listening to The Food Code. If this episode resonated with you, please share, rate, and review as this helps us reach others around the world. With that, thank you for listening. We'll be back soon. Love you guys.